Hello! Welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 134, I think. I looked it up, but I forgot. <laughs> I'm a bit out of practice. Um, you can find me everywhere as Kralalin. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever the works. I have a web shop at colorfulcreativity.nl or colorfulcreativity.com and it is open again, so you can totally shop again. And I've been on a very unexpected, uh, almost three and a half month hiatus. Um, I guess I told you again that I would be back in a week. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, every time I said I'm going back um, or I'm going to weekly recordings, something happens and I disappear. Um, so I'm not going to promise you anything at the moment. Um, I'll get back to the reason why I was gone at the end for those of you who don't know yet and um, I'm just gonna dive in where I am now there will be things you will be missing because I finished them in between and well yeah maybe I will show them in another episode but at the moment I'm just going for it and I am starting with a finished object I haven't even, I don't even know the name of it, but these were the qualifiers for Sock Madness and um, I managed to do that within the time frame. So I qualified and then got into a team and was like, thank you very much, I'm not going to join. <laughs> but at least it's nice to chat in a smaller group than the whole big cheerleader group and that was what I had uh, asked the moderators as well and they were like yeah i can totally imagine a smaller group will be better for you and um, yeah just do that it's fine we need people to drop out in the first round so if you are that other people will continue so i did that um it's an amazing pattern it was absolutely what i needed at that moment something distracting not too difficult it really clicked i'm now gonna look up what they are called because this is a podcast with stuff uh, with good info so these are the Engel Crystal socks um, angel crystal in English um, they were designed by a German designer Kaya uh, Gossens and she is Lana Filia on Instagram. She also has a podcast, I think an audio podcast, I'm not sure, video or audio, but um, yeah. And she is my teammate now in the Super Sock World Championship that is also going to start somewhere this month. Um, if you want to sign up, you have until the 25th of May. And um, I'll put a link to the rules and everything and the website where you get to sign up. Um, I think you still have to be a Revel user, but um, they changed it up a bit and they now have a website. So you can read all the info there. Um, I used... What did I use for yarn? Um, the colorful blue-greenish one is a Regia yarn and the other one is a Schipjes Invicta Glamour. And I really enjoyed them. I had always wanted to knit a cable pattern on top of the rest. Like um, there was one, hmm, not even sure what it was called. It was a free one on Knitty, I think, or in a magazine. Um, I really liked doing that. Um, it's been in my queue for ages. And with this one, I finally ticked off that box. and love it so i hope to make more of that kind with a nice um clown bar or something and then a good contrast i think that will be amazing and i really love the sole detail um it has a slip stitch in there and yeah won't be a surprise they don't fit me <laughs> i um 
Yeah, I'm a tight knitter, so I should have gone up. I, I knit the largest size, but it just doesn't stretch over my feet. And um, I made them a bit shorter. So I'm now, now that I showed them to you, uh, looking for someone who will fit these. I'm pretty sure I have a friend with a size 38 or 39 that I can uh, give that to. Then I only yesterday picked up my design project for this month. I was working on that in February when I dropped everything. And um, I was actually working with a tech editor and everything and I was really enjoying it. And I dropped everything because my head was just not in the game anymore. And um, yeah, I picked it up yesterday. My head was in the game. I was able to write out the pattern mostly, send it to the tech, tech editor. And I'm now waiting for her comments so I can uh, send it with a little editing to my test knitters. Um, I'm gonna show you the back side. I'm only in sock number one, but I'm already at the ribbing as you can see. Really proud. And here we have a detail. This is double moss stitch, which is awesome. And I'm knitting this in a one of a kind uh, colorway uh, on colorful soft sock, so my own yarn. And I'm gonna try to recreate the yarn somehow because look how lovely that purple is. It's, it's a little bit tonal variegated-ish. It's not really variegated, I guess tonal is just the best word. It's not a real semi-solid, it has some striping sections. You can see that better on camera actually than in real life, but yeah. That's a little bit of pooling there, but it looks really nice. And yeah, hopefully I can manage to publish this one on my grand's birthday again, May 24th, like I did last two years. So a nice uh, project in honor of her. And another project, and one of my 12 cast-ons is in my Colorful Creativity project bag. And uh, this is the three color cashmere cowl by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I'm not sure. Last time I might have frogged it back and um, I re it in a different yarn. I frogged back all the way to this and I was already here. So I had all of this to frog. Mm. But it was for a good cause because the yarn I was using was itching and I had made another cowl before that I did show, I think. Um, a DK cowl, it's just a small one, very simple, but it was also itchy. Um, somehow the twist in the yarn and the yarn content um, definitely makes a difference. <coughs> so for this one, I uh, kept the skein yarn, and this is Top Draw Socks in the Sandstorm colorway. It is a 85% superwash merino and 15% uh, nylon. And instead of the yarn I was using, I've added these two, which are both hedgehog fibers. And I don't have a card from that because this one was frogged and the other one, don't know where it went, but I think these are their sock base of 90% merino and 10% nylon. They are really soft and I can totally handle them. Not high twist, just normal twist. Um, really enjoying the feel of it. It's really nice and soft. And I've been trying this side on my neck for a, f a bit every few uh, segments. Um, I was knitting the pattern as it was supposed to. There's a pearl here in this bit, like a uh, pearl every X stitches. Um, but I wasn't really digging the feel of that. So I left them at 16 rows and just went for plain stockinette. I mean, the yarn is pretty enough. You don't really see those pearl 
stitches anyways and yeah just gonna do stockinette until I'm at the next section I think I have about 16 stitch uh, rows to go before I can start the next section I'm really really enjoying this so I will finally have a nice cowl for myself I hope it has a nice drape so it's a bit looser which is good because I like that at least I don't like it super tight <clears throat> then I have here a project in the squirrel project bag. It is an Eldenwood craft project bag. And I got this one as a gift from a lovely friend. And in here I have already one sock. This is a new cast on for you guys because I cast this on in February. Uh, I remember because, well, I know why and when I cast it on. And this is partially a vanilla latte pattern. I'm not sure who the designer of that one is, but I will pop it in the show notes. Um, so yeah, nice, simple self-striping and a plain vanilla foot. And these are for my husband. And I even hand wound the ball, like a gobstopper ball, which is very nice to do with this yarn. Um, Somehow I think this yarn kind of deserves it. The yarn is by Crealine Design. It is a self-striping rainbow clip yarn from April 2021. And her shop is now closed because she is having a baby. And I am now, I think, at the heel flap of the second sock. So. This one needs a bit of brain power and is not travel uh, ready. I'm gonna make sure that I will do that soon. So this pair of socks will be finished in the not too uh, distant future, I hope. And the last project I've worked on that I want to show you, I mean, I have worked on other projects, but I do not want to show it all and I do not want to make this podcast super long. Um, in this Tina and Meep project bag from the Colorful Creativity Advent Calendar of 2020, I have a square, a full blanket square. I did, I finished my first one and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, all the green yarns might um, look familiar. I was working on a bubble cardigan back when I was still recording uh, earlier in the year uh, for my husband. It's finished. I don't have it here. I will show you another time. Um, it deserves all the honor and glory. Um, but some of the yarns that I had left over ended up in this green square of the Stitch in Time uh, blanket. Um, the pattern is by K. Jones of the Bakery Bears and um, I did a, a small alteration because my squares are smaller than the ones in the pattern. I'm only casting on 25 stitches because I want to finish the tiny square in about 20 minutes, which I now actually can do. Um, I made a tiny mis mistake that my uh, border is one row too short on all the sides, which means that I have to weave in four ends because you end up at the wrong side and you can't pick up the stitches. I'm not sure yet if I am bothered enough to undo it and uh, redo the whole thing or if I'm just gonna go for one extra round in all the new squares and just think, yeah, it will be fine. Who will notice? Except for me because I know. So. Those were the whips that are most active in the past few weeks. And yeah, I also have one, well, it's not really an acquisition if it is a gift, isn't it? It's uh, something that came in. Um, 
a while ago, I guess somewhere in November, um, you know, way back before that, I got a message from a wonderful viewer. Hi, Annika. Um, she is Annika Crochet. Let me look it up. Is it Annika's Crochet? Annika Crochets? My brain is not Annika's Crochet. And, um, and she messaged me, how are your whips doing? And how is your wonderful um, blanket doing? And she was uh, talking about the Riverstone blanket. That was the crochet blanket I had going with all those tiny river uh, washed and stone washed minis from Scheepjes Yarn. And I had done a few of those squares and it ended up somewhere in my big hibernation pile. And she said, well, I would love to make it for you. And I was like, no, I'm going to do that myself. So almost a year later, I think, um, she offered it again. And I said, okay, thank you. I would love that. So here we are. I now have a complete blanket. I think it took her not even four months. So really, really quick. And I'm going to show it to you double and then show you the other side because it's too big to show you. But here it is in all its glory. I cannot look at the camera at the moment, but hey ho. Yeah, that was one side. And now the other side. So it's huge and a lot bigger than I expected it to be. So that is amazing and it's really nice and cozy. Um, I haven't used it yet because I wanted to keep it pretty for showing you. And I'm definitely very much in love with it. It is, uh, the feel is really nice. And uh, yeah, these are, let me see. I think I did this bit. And some of those I already put together and a few loose, uh, single ones of these. And that was it. The rest is all Annika's work and she messaged me about how I um, managed to uh, attach the whole thing and I was like, um, <laughs> did I do this? No? Okay. Did I do that? No? Then I'm afraid you have to undo it to see what I did. <laughs> so she did that and then she used that method because she was like, oh, that's a really neat method. Yeah, sometimes I can do neat stuff. And um, yeah. And because Annika is absolutely the sweetest. This was not the only thing she put in the box that she sent me. Uh, first of all, there was a really, really nice card. Uh, leaves are love. And um, look at this. Huge scroll project bag. I'm pretty sure my blanket will live in this from now on instead of this one because this one is already too small. So this will be amazing for my big blanket project. There's no maker on it and I know Annika doesn't sew. So um, yeah, not sure who made it. Um, maybe Annika will let us know in the comments if she wants to share. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous and it's the typical Dutch scroll, the orange pretty scroll that I absolutely adore. And that was not all. There was also this very cute little pouch that is a needle pouch for uh, darning needles. Uh, let me open it up. And I put something in there because I thought that was the best place to put them. Um, so you can put your darning needles in here, but also this cute pin with all the stitch markers. Look at that. Cats in teacups. Isn't that amazing? I absolutely love them. 
so cute. So thank you so, so, so much, Annika. Um, yeah, this will be enjoyed very, very much. So kept it away from the cats. So they haven't really uh, clawed at it. It's still looking very nice and pristine. So now I can put it on our couch so I can always grab the blanket if I need one. I'm folding it so you can see how big it is. Wait, I have to do it in threes because otherwise it doesn't really fit. Look at how big. Oh, it's so nice. So nice and squishy. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah. And that um, brings me at the personal talk. So anyone who doesn't want to hear that definitely can understand. It's going to be a trigger warning uh, about cancer and um, it's going to suck. So uh, if you are not up for that, totally understand. And I hope to see you again next time, whenever that will be. And uh, for those staying, thank you very much. Um, highly appreciated. Um, back in February, we uh, thought Robert was anemic and that it was just a tiny thingy somewhere in his uh, bowel. Easy fix, whatever. Well, it wasn't. Um, after the iron infusion he got, he was really, really sick. And then he got trouble speaking. So we were like, what is going on here? Um, and I went to the doctors with him and he was like, oh yeah, I'm just tired. He got a really bad headache at that time. So I'm like, yeah, just tired probably from the whole infusion and being sick and very high fever, etc. But after two days and less headache, it didn't go away. So I went to the doctor with him again and they sent us back to the hospital again. And um, yeah, they did a scan of his head and that was really bad. Um, we thought, well, maybe it's a uh, aneurysm or something, it's something small, treatable, we can manage, we will survive. But no, it was a massive brain tumor. And yeah, that weekend the whole world was put upside down and one day he had more scans and they found more um, cancer in his organs, in his whole body. So yeah, that really sucked. Uh, it's all met metastasized cancer from his original melanoma that he had 10 years ago or 11 years now. Um, so yeah, that just sucked. Um, it, no other words. There was a lot of crying, swearing and everything. Um, it's stage four, which means it's not curable. It is treatable. So all we can do is hope for treatment to be successful, make it smaller and keep it under control for as long as possible. And yeah, that also means for the whole podcast that I have no clue what's in store for us now. We will have scans again in about two weeks and um, we hope to see that treatment that he is getting is working. But I have no clue where my head is at, how many times we have to go to the hospital that week. And it's all unknown. At the moment, he's doing fine. He is at work. He is going once a week just because he is having fun at it. Um, not because he has to, um, but if he stays at home, he's bored and being bored is not healthy. So um, yeah, he's fine. I just, uh, yeah, he got a bike, a new bike helmet and he has to go do everything by bike because apparently when you have a brain tumor, you are not allowed to drive a car, <sighs> which means I have to drive now. And I, well, most of you know how much I hate driving, but I'm doing it, I'm getting over that fear and yeah, small steps, but still I'm doing it. Um, 
so yeah it's it's big it's really big this stuff that happened and that made me uh, really sad and I just couldn't find the drive to record a podcast and I wasn't in the right mindset at all um, plus Robert is home now most of the time so a small vlog fine but a longer podcast eh, is a bit, a bit of an issue recording it while he's at home um, we've got a whole new schedule structure medicine taking um, not eating because they have to be taken on an empty stomach and everything um, we are okay at the moment um, he feels good the doctor says the treatment is probably doing its job um, because his um, blood his anemia is all gone which means that the tumor in his bowel is smaller and stopped leaking melanomas are really nasty because they leak blood um, so yeah um, he's got a targeted treatment and we have a future plan but it all depends on the scans so we have multiple ideas of what will be in our future but all depends on how good the treatment now is working if it isn't working we get other treatments and yeah all uncertainty but for now he is feeling good I will be feeling better <laughs> once I know how far along and whatever if it's shrinking and stuff but yeah all I can do is if he is feeling good then I am allowed to feel good and just take it day by day and not look to the future too much because that scares the hell out of me I have opened my shop again um, I had closed it when I heard the news and I was like yeah if I'm gonna pack orders now I'm gonna mix them up everything will go in the wrong box and everything uh, let's just not add that stress to it packages will get lost etc I just didn't feel like that and um, the shop is open again. I hope to be dyeing yarn soon. Um, I feel like that again. Uh, my creativity is getting back. I hope to finish the pattern first. And then in about two weeks or so, after the scans and after the results, I hope that my drive to dye yarn is back. And you will have some new yarn to look forward to. And yeah. We didn't sit still, by the way. Um, that really shakes you up, but it also makes you um, think about what's important. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mings. Yeah. Um, and um, there's a lot less procrastination here now at the moment. Uh, we did our front garden, which I will uh, share in a photo. Uh, it's not yet finished, but um, I need to put the plants in, but I'm waiting until halfway through May after uh, that time they say it won't freeze anymore so sounds like the best option and um, the gardener still has to remove a lot of the weeds that are underneath the soil at the moment and he's coming today to grab them out somehow not my job he's gonna do it um, we also did our bedroom and we did that ourselves and I'm super proud of Robert for doing that um, we got a new bed, we ordered it. Um, we had to do that for three years already, but Corona virus and everything, <laughs> didn't really agree with us going to shop, um, but we did it now. And um, we got a bed with those um, electrical adjustable parts. So we can put up the head and we can put up the feet and oh, super luxurious and super nice. And I started browsing and I was like, I would really like some new wallpaper. And I found an awesome, amazing wallpaper. And I was like, yeah, it's expensive, but should we do that? I was like, oh, let's just go for it. So we did. Um, we, ha we didn't have electric electricity in the wall behind the bed, which means that if you have, uh, you need uh, electricity for your bed, uh, we would have all those long um, sockets. Um, I'm not sure what the word is. 
like I said, my brain is still a bit wonky sometimes. Um, but we would have electricity from a socket on the other side of the wall and then under the bed and then on in the next one. So we would, would all have power everything, everywhere we wanted. And I was like, I don't want that anymore. I want my sockets in the wall, behind the bed, on the place where I need them and not under the bed and everything. We have one under the bed for the bed, but that's fine because it needs three. Um, so yeah, we did that ourselves and it was a very big, uh, big DIY project, but uh, we managed it uh, in about a week and a half. So Robert made the whole, uh, he drilled the, the line in the wall and then we put the wiring in and we plastered the whole thing. I say we, but mostly it was Robert. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just so proud of it all. So I'm putting in a photo of our new bed in our bedroom with our new wallpapered wall. And I love, absolutely love how it looks. And uh, the bed is really nice. I just picked up a new pillow <laughs> because uh, yeah, my pillows were equally old as the bed and somehow they don't match the new mattress <laughs> with thickness and how far you go into your bed and everything. So I hope my new cushion uh, or pillow is doing better for me. Uh, yeah, well, I guess that's basically it. So I know that's a blurb of bad news coming at you where I look very cheerful. Um, yeah because we still have days that we are cheerful, especially now Robert is feeling good. Um, yeah, he, he's missing a few words. So um, like his brain has some damage of uh, the whole thing, but um, to see it like there was a tumor and there was all fluid around it that was uh, giving pressure to his brain and that gave some damage where he doesn't know some words and when he's tired he has more issues with it because he doesn't have the other words that are the same the cats are fighting um but besides that he's all fine so fingers crossed we can keep it that way for a very long time and we can just make cancer be a chronic disease that's all we can hope for. Yeah, is it time? Okay. Well, like being said, it's time to stop now and stop blabbering. And I hope to see you again soon. Like I said, I have no clue when I will be recording again and when I feel like it, but um, at least I did not disappear fully of the face of the earth. And you know a bit more now what happened here and what's all going on. Um, so yeah, hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.